So, this week marked the beginning of the Women's Soccer World Cup being held in Australia and New Zealand this year. And once again, just like we do during every World Cup, we find ourselves confronted with the same cartoonishly ridiculous conversation of equal pay amongst athletes of all genders. For the next month, our television sets are going to be accosted by one purple-haired gremlin after the other, vomiting talking point after talking point, all utterly divorced from reality in unhinged soliloquies like these. Jesse, the receipts. Thank you everyone for having me here today. It is an honor to be here in front of you. Um, it's probably no surprise, but equal pay and equality in general is a deep and personal passion of mine. And what we've learned and what we continue to learn is that there's no level of status and there's no accomplishment or power that will protect you from the clutches of inequality. One cannot simply outperform inequality or be excellent enough to escape discrimination of any kind. And I'm here today because I know firsthand that this is true. We're so often told in this country that if you just work hard and continue to achieve, you will be rewarded and rewarded fairly. It's the promise of the American dream, but that promise has not been for everyone. The United States Women's National Team has won four World Cup championships. We've won four Olympic gold medals on behalf of this great country. So, if you are paying attention to Megan Rapinoe in that clip, you might have caught her emphasis on the fact that the U.S. women's team has won four World Cups compared to the men's zero. Therefore implying that the women are a better team by comparison and should be paid the same, if not more, than the men. And look, I'm not trying to take away from Megan Rapinoe and the U.S. women's soccer team's accomplishments. They're obviously very good at what they do. But even with all the World Cups they have won, they exist in an entirely different stratosphere, scale-wise, compared to the men. It's not even close. The U.S. men's team is not that good compared to other men. But against the women, there is not even a conversation to be had here. A prime example of this is how often the world champion U.S. women's team loses by jaw-dropping margins against, team, against men's teams ranging from under-15 boys all the way to legitimate retirees. Jesse, the sad receipts. Again, you got to be careful. There's a shot, and there's a goal. First goal for the keeper. Nice spin move here by Lloyd. Lloyd! Another shot and another goal. And yet... A look for the players running off of him. It's a big ask, but... Well, there's Trundle able to turn and get another goal. But Trundle able to keep it. With the left and Trundle with his second goal. It's now 5 nine. Yeah, so far so good in this game. So far so good. Another goal. Trundle. Murkoff trying to move around, and that's going to be a nice pass. In a Murkoff takes that shot with the left and swinging to make that perfect contact. And that was, I mean, it's a fast pace. You know, a lot of these guys have a lot of experience, a lot of goals as well. Like so, this actually once again drives home the point of the unfair advantage biological man competing in women's sports have. What you just saw there is the best women's soccer team in the world competing against a retired Wrexham squad made up of gout-riddled car salesmen and chartered accountants. This tracks with the fact that athletes that might be considered to be mediocre in a man's leagues seem to cut a pole to the top of the food chain once they transition into the women's leagues. Now, 
Let's address the whole matter of revenue, which, if we're being honest, is the real elephant in the room here. Men lie, women lie, numbers don't. So let's take a second and crunch some numbers here. So according to Forbes, the World Cup in 2014 brought in $73 million on the women's side, of which players got 13%. The men's side, on the other hand, brought in $4 billion, of which 9% went to the players. As for the World Cup in Russia, the men generated $6 billion in revenue, of which less than 7% went to the players for a grand total of about $400 million. Meanwhile, the women's side generated $131 million, of which $30 million went to the players. That means that according to these figures, women are taking home 20% of the entire pot compared to the man's 7%. Technically speaking, if women wanted equal pay, they should be getting paid less if we're strictly basing this off of a share of revenue compensation method. Now, if what they mean by equal pay is the actual amount, meaning that women should also get to split $400 million, this would insinuate that they're asking to split four times the total amount of money brought in by the entire tournament. Where is that money supposed to come from, Megan? The reason why it is a comical suggestion is because that money does not exist. And this applies to the majority of sports as well. The WNBA generates $60 million in total revenue every year to the NBA's $8 billion. The reason why male players get paid more is not because of the patriarchy or misogyny. It's simply because there is just more money to go around. So the only way that the equal pay demands as they're currently being made can be fulfilled is by paying the men way less, therefore making the owners richer since they will get to keep the difference. The question we should be asking ourselves instead is why is there such a disparity between the interest levels in men versus women's sports? Simply put, no matter how much lipstick you put on that pig, men are just better at sports. They are more interesting to watch because they're faster, they're more athletic, they dribble quicker, you name it. But now, let's flip the coin and take a look at an industry where women are paid far more than men. For example, the top 10 male models combined last year made a grand total of $8 million. On the flip side, the single highest paid female model made nearly $30 million all by herself. Why are there no marches on the Victoria's Secret headquarters? There should be angel wings ablaze in the streets and battalions of SWAT team deployed to quell the civil unrest caused by this terrible injustice. But we understand the reason why that happens and no one is blaming the matriarchy for this is because we understand that female models make more money because they're worth more. They're more beautiful than the men. Women can model more things beyond clothes like makeup and jewelry, which male, can do, which male models can do as well, but men don't buy nearly as much jewelry and makeup, therefore affecting the amount of money and revenue that male models actually bring in. So no, toots. The patriarchy is not the reason why LeBron James makes 300 times Brittany Griner's yearly salary. It's because in order for me to make sure that this analogy landed, I had to use Brittany Griner, the 35th highest paid player in the WNBA, with the number one name recognition for everything other than basketball. 
because I had a feeling you cannot name another WNBA player off the top of your head, even if I put a gun to it. Absolutely preposterous. And that'll do for the show this week. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. We really appreciate it. Please don't forget to share, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell notification button so you know when we're uploading new content. We're trying to reach 5,000 subscribers before October, so each and every form of engagement helps. Until next time, stay propositive.